Okay. Um, so I was re-watching the latest Nick Robinson video. Um, if you don't know Nick Robinson, one of my favorite YouTubers. But he's the sort of YouTuber who doesn't get, like, his views are very disproportionate to his subscribers. Like, he has videos with, like, eight, like, regularly gets over millions of views in his videos. Like, five, eight million views. But he's the sort of YouTuber, kind of like a... What's that guy? Internet historian, where like he uploads a very high effort video maybe once a month kind of situation and that video gets circulated, but he has under a million subscribers, which I think is a travesty because he's a great storyteller, great YouTuber. If you haven't checked out his videos, go check him out. I recommend, uh, well, any of his videos are really good. To be honest, they're, they're all pretty great. Um, but he made a, his most recent video is about the Microsoft Bimbo's uh, image. It's great, great video. Um, but one of the things that happens in that video is he goes on Google Earth VR and wanders around this area in Japan in order to find the Microsoft Bimbo's uh, shop, uh, or where, where it used to be anyway. And uh, it's one of the, really, the, the video sort of transforms into this treatise on the power of, you know, uh, Google Street View <laughs> and, like, how it can take you to a nostalgic place and... You know, and so I thought to myself, re-watching this section, like, he says specifically something like showing, taking a friend to somewhere where they were as a kid and seeing their reaction. Now, obviously, I don't have VR, but I thought, I'm going to go somewhere where I've got been, went as a kid in Street View. Where can I go that I went as a kid that I can't go to right now? And I thought about it for a second, and, um... I don't know how much information I want to give away here. Um, okay, I'll try, I'll speak in vagaries. I'll speak in vagaries here, just, just to protect my own personal identity and stuff. I don't know how this would actually be traced back to me, but I'll speak in vagaries anyway. So, essentially, I, 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 when I was thinking of places that I went as a kid that I can't visit in real life right now, that I want to go around in Google Street View, the thing that came to my mind was this holiday resort in Turkey that was a big part of my childhood. I went there many times. And um, this may be shocking because, uh, you know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't poor but growing up, but I wasn't rich, not rich enough to go to a holiday resort in Turkey every year. Like a fancy, fuck, like it's a fancy holiday resort. It's not a, not a, like a, a Butlins. So you guys don't have Butlins in America. Butlins is also great, by the way. I've been to Butlins a few times. Um, fun times. But anyway, <laughs> if you don't know what Butlins is, Google it. Um, but no, this is in Turkey, fancy holiday resort that I went to many times as a kid. But I couldn't afford it. So how did I go there? How did my family afford it? Well, let me tell you the story. So, it's still a bit vague in my mind. I don't really know. As a kid, I definitely didn't understand any of what was going on. And as an adult, I still don't really understand what happened. But as far as I can piece the pieces together, um, if you don't know, this, uh, again, I have to be kind of vague here, because I think this may implicate some family members in criminal activities. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't worry, they weren't, like, selling drugs and that's how they got the money. It's a lot more boring than that. So as far as I can tell, what happened was, my dad is like an academic, right? My dad's a, a lecturer at a university. And um, as far as I can tell, what happened is the son of a Turkish billionaire came to my dad to basically, like, help him out with his studies. Now, I don't know what the extent of this was. Like... Did he pay my dad to write his PhD for him? Or did he pay my dad to, like, privately tutor him? I don't know. And I don't think my dad will ever admit. Like, if it was, if he was just paid to write all his shit for him, I don't think my dad would ever admit that to me. So, who knows? Honestly, it could be a mixture of the two. But, um, all I know is he paid the son of a pay Turkish billionaire, who's super fucking rich, like mega, mega, top of 0.1% billionaire. When I say billionaire, I mean billionaire. Like, very, very, very rich. Uh, paid my dad, somehow, to, in some sense, in some way, help him out with his studies. And this money that my dad got from this son of a Turkish billionaire 
um, basically, I, I don't know if it was, I don't know if they, they I don't know, I, basically, my dad helping this guy out, in whatever capacity he helped him out, I don't know, um, allowed my dad to have certain perks, and one of the perks was going to this resort in Turkey, uh, for free, because his dad owned it, so that's how I ended up there, because it was this weird fucking situation where we, he would fly us over fucking, like, business class, and we could just go over there as a family and stay there for free. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know what the situation was, I don't, I, I mean, obviously I was really young, like, ten years old or something, so I don't really remember the exact details if, I don't know if my family had to pay for, like, food and stuff like that, I don't know, but either way, this is a pretty fucking crazy situation, um, which I did not understand the sort of repercussions of and the severity of the situation when I was a kid, I didn't really, I just thought, hey, going on holiday, woo! Um, so firstly, we basically never stepped foot, we went like many times, if I, like at least three or four times that I can remember, probably more before I can remember when I was like a baby, but it was like a family tradition, like every, I think it was like either every year or every other year we would go, it stopped eventually because um, this guy finished his PhD and so no longer was paying you know, if you doing what happened, then, well, in a, you know, that, uh, it was, it was complicated. I have a whole conspiracy theory about the link between my schooling and this Turkish billionaire. I have, like, a whole conspiracy theory about this, um, but it's very vague to me. So if, I, I guess I can go into it a little bit. One of the other things that happened to me as a kid that was very strange, which is part of why I talk like this, if you ever notice I talk in quite a posh accent, even though I live in, like, the hood, essentially, um, it's because I went to a private school growing up, not, uh, and it's, it's very strange, again, this was something to do with this Turkish billionaire guy, I don't know the extent of it, but what I do know is that as soon as the, the Turkish billionaire stopped, you know, whatever that relationship ended with my dad, suspiciously, that was the same year, literally months apart, where I was suspended indefinitely, expelled, kicked out of that school. Very suspiciously. Very suspiciously. Who knows what was going on there? I have all kind of conspiracy theories as to what might have been going on with regards to that guy and my school. And Because it wasn't just like a regular private school, it was a, 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 an international school. Like a, the, if you ever heard of the International Baccalaureate, it was a school for that. Um, which is like even more suspicious. And like, for a pri like I've seen private schools. This was not a, like a. It was a weird fucking school. It was a really fucking like. It seemed like they never had any money, despite the fact that it was a. They're supposed to have low like. They hadn't. When I moved to a public school after I got kicked out, when I went to like a normal school, they had everything was way better. Like they actually had modern computers. They actually had like, clean modern rooms with like resources, it was very straight, like, the science room was a proper science room, and not just another classroom, like, it had, you know, taps and Bunsen burners and whatever, not just a rat, it was very weird, like, how did they have no money, maybe there was some corruption going on at that school, I wouldn't put it past them, I know the high-level staff, uh, like, they definitely had, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of corruption going on in that school or whatever, but anyway, that was another thing that happened. So that was fucking weird. That's, my life was fucking weird growing up, I'm telling you. So that's why I speak in a posh accent, even though I'm not particularly posh, is because uh, I went to a private school growing up, and everyone there was posh. I was, like, probably by far the poorest person in that school. And every time I'd go over to someone's house, they would have this, like, huge fucking houses and, like, well, not huge, but, like, whole houses. You know, I live in a flat. I always lived in a flat. Everyone, every time I'd go over to someone's house, they'd have, like, a proper house, like in a good location, and like, games consoles, TVs, you know, I, it was very clear that every every time I'd go over to someone's house from that school, they were richer than me, um, and I was not, so, not that I grew up poor or anything, I don't, I don't want to say that, you know, I grew up middle class, but I'm just saying, like, there was, 
on the on the scales, it was a weird situation that I was even there in the first place because I am not on that level of rich, never have been. Um, and then, well, there was a whole situation with money and my dad's side of the family anyway <laughs> that also occurred sort of around the same time. But uh, I don't, again, I don't want to go into that. Let's talk more about this Turkish holiday resort. So, I'm trying to fucking f figure out how to phrase this in a story. So, it was, it was just a weird situation. Like, I guess this is, like, a weirdly, like, amazing thing to happen to you as a child. That, like, I got to go to this really fancy school, even though it was actually fucked up and shit and, like, corrupt and um, everyone there was awful and the teachers were awful and it said, like, there was a lot of terrible shit in that school. But, you know, theoretically, I got to go to this great private school, international baccalaureate, and I got to go on these fucking hol fancy hol- like, this is crazy. I- this is- this is only- I've only noticed this, like, more and more growing up. I didn't think anything of it as a kid, but now I'm like, whoa, whoa, that's a fucking weird thing to happen to a person. Um, anyway. So this- this- this holiday resort, it was like, right next to a beach, but they also had pools. So I spent most of my time in, like, the- they had a, like, a, a, an Olympic pool where you could swim laps. Then they had, like, a hangout pool, which was, like, had, like, two levels to it. It was pretty cool. It had, like, a waterfall built into the pool. Like, it had a, it was, like, a double pool where one of the pools was, like, on a raised level. And then it had a waterfall from that pool into a lower pool. It was pretty cool. Um, but that was mo mostly for, like, mostly, like, adults hang out there. Then they had another pool which had some water slides, and that was like the kids' pool. Um, so three pools plus the ocean. A lot of swimming went on. A lot of swimming went on. Uh, plus it's fucking Turkey, so it's like incredibly hot. Now one thing I do remember about this place. The first, it was, it was crazy that I got to witness the economic development of this random part of Turkey as a child. Because the first time I went there, going there from the airport, the street that the, the resort was on was a dirt road. Literally, like, it was a big road, but it was dirt. Like, it wasn't paved. And there was pretty much nothing else around. It was just a, a dirt road to this place. And the more times I'd go there, the more built up the area around it would become. It's like, oh, now it's got a... Now it's, like, tarmac. Oh, now there's some shops around. Like, <laughs> every time I'd go there, it would become a little more economically developed and built up. That was an interesting thing I noticed. Um, so, I never really left the resort. I never, I think we went to Istanbul once. I barely remember, I was so young. I, I actually just don't, straight up don't remember it. I just know it happened, but I don't really remember it at all. Uh, and I know it once we got donkeys and, and rode around the local area on donkeys outside of the resort. But that's the only two times we left the resort and, like, went into Turkey. Which is a shame, because Turkey's a really cool country. I wish I'd got to explore the culture and food, because they got good fucking food there, more. The food in the resort was all Western food, like regular European food, toast and shit. Not nice, delicious Turkish food. Uh, I mean, it was nice food, but you know what I'm trying to say. Although, as a kid, I was very picky. I was a very picky eater as a kid, so actually, I probably wouldn't have eaten the nice, delicious Turkish food. I just want to go there now and have a kebab, I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> as a kid, I would have probably just been like, what is this? This isn't the stuff I'm used to. So this resort place, it was like... I don't really know what else happened. They had some, like, kids' activities. That's what I spent most of the day doing. Like, kids' activities. Like, like, like... What did they do? There was like archery. I did like an archery thing a couple times. I, I did like a like a BB gun, air, air rifles. I did once. Um, I think there was Uno. I think I remember playing Uno with some other kids and losing and probably having a tantrum about that. Um, what else happened? I'm trying to, is this, this is such a hard, I already have a bad memory, and this is like, I was a really young kid, so a lot of it's really difficult for me to remember, but I vividly remember, like, the, the place, I remember more than, like, things I did, I remember, like, 
the physicality of the space. So just going to like Google Maps and looking around there in Google Maps, it's like crazy because I'm like, whoa, blast from the past. This is what the beach looked like. Oh yeah, it had this weird fucking wall and there would be lizards on the wall. And, uh, you know, lizards are not native to the UK, so this was like the only time I'd seen lizards. And it was like, it was, whoa, lizards. And I remember one time I saw a kid and he was like catching the lizards and like torturing the lizards. And I was like, he was a bigger kid than me, so I was too scared to go up to him and tell him to stop torturing the lizards. But he was like fucking with the lizards. And I was like, what are you fucking doing? Why are you fucking with the lizards? I remember that happening once. Um, but yeah, lizards, there was lizards, that was weird and cool, and there was this wall, this big rock wall next to the beach that you could like sort of climb up, but it was a bit too difficult to climb up, um, and then there was a beach, obviously, uh, I, I, oh, I got to do some really cool shit, okay, this is like the coolest shit I got to do, I got to ride on a fucking jet ski, my dad would have to actually drive it. Obviously, I wasn't allowed to drive it as, like, a fucking ten-year-old. Even they had safety standards. But my dad would drive it, and I'd be, like, on the jet ski on the back holding on to him. Crazy shit. Jet skis, coolest shit ever fucking invented. Everyone should ride around on jets. In my opinion, we should have, like, an Aria-style world where everything is canals, like, Nero Venezia, everything is canals, and everyone should ride jet skis to work. All other modes of transportation are shit. Jet skis are the coolest thing of all time. Jet ski is very cool. Going really fast on a jet ski as a kid, like, one of my fondest memories. I just remember being on the back, holding on to my dad for dear life, fucking water spraying at me from all angles. And when you go over a wave, it's like, poof, poof, it's fucking nuts. It's sick. That's one of my fondest memories from, from this resort. And then also, they had, um, I forget what it's called, parasailing. Basically, they put, you go on a boat, like a speedboat, and they, like, strap you into a big parachute, and then they let the parachute, and then you, like, float up in this parachute while you're being dragged along by a boat. Um, and you just sort of float up. And you think it's, like, a thrilling thing, but it's not th it's not scary at all. Um, it's mostly just, like, relaxing, actually, because you're just sort of floating in the air, attached to this parachute, going over the water. I did that once. I had to be strapped in with my dad. Um, like a, like a doubles, like, he was strapped to me. Like, I was strapped to him. Do you, do you understand what I'm just Like, yeah. That was really cool. Although, I don't really remember it very well, but I'm pretty sure it was cool. <laughs> I mean, how can that not be cool? Uh, and then I remember one time, for some reason I brought with me um, this fake egg. You heard me right. This fake egg. A rubber egg. I think it was a prank item, but I didn't understand this. I just thought it was like a bouncy ball. But I brought this with me. It's like a bouncy rubber egg. And I think it was supposed to be used for pranks. I didn't understand this as a kid. I thought it was just a, like a, a fun egg toy. But I, I brought it with me. And my dad, the, the, the very dad person he is, decided to play a prank on the innocent stuff of the fucking place. Where he, um, at breakfast, brought the rubber egg with him. And um, he, he called over one of the <laughs> stuff. This was so embarrassing to witness, because it was just like, I just felt really bad for the stuff, guys, because I was like, what are you doing, Dad? But yeah, he, he brought us, you can see where this is going, right? He pretended to drop the egg, and the egg bounced, and it was, yeah, that happened, it was funny, probably, I don't really remember if it was funny, I was, I, I just remember it happening, and being like, I'm not sure if you should be doing this, Dad, should you be pranking these guys? I don't know, but I remember that happening. Uh, what else? I remember one time, one, one, one summer when I went there, I met this other kid. It's the only time this, this happened. In all the times I went there, I think I must have gone like at least four times. I don't remember, but I met this other kid and made friends with another kid who, this other, I don't know where the fuck he was from, spoke surprisingly good English for how young he was. We managed to communicate somehow. I have no idea where he's from. I, I want to say Portugal, but I don't know if he was... I don't know. That's just a random guess. Um, but yeah, maybe Brazil. I remember he was, like, tan. He wasn't, like, black, but he was, like, tanned, like, dark-ish skin. So Brazil sounds about right. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I made friends with him, and we'd, like, hang out in the, in the kids' pool. And, like, play hide-and-seek and whatever. Um... 
there was there was these two slides. So the pool had two slides. It had a, a sort of like tube slide that was like kind of twisty. And you'd think it would be fun, but it wasn't that fun because it wasn't really that fast. And it gets boring pretty quick. Like the first couple times you do it, it's fun. And then for staying there for like a week, you get bored of it very quickly. But the other slide was basically a big slide straight down with a bump in the middle. So we go like this. It was it was like a big wide slide, and they'd go woo 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 like that, right? So it was down, then like a bump in the middle, and then down. And if you went fast enough, if you pushed yourself fast enough, you could get airtime off the fucking bump. You could like fly up, and it really hurt when you landed because you would like fly up and then hit the fucking like slide with your ass and damage your coccyx. Um, and I did that so many times because you, you, you like push yourself down really fast and you go vroom, vroom, and then you like fly a little bit and then you land and it's crazy. That was what I spent a lot of time doing. Um, also like very dangerously playing around the end of the slides where I would like go underwater and like swim behind sort of the back of the slides so that people would be coming out of the slide over me and I would like hit like it was weird. I know I shouldn't have done this probably because I could have very easily just gotten like whacked in the face by someone coming down the slide. Never happened as far as I remember, but that now that I think back on it, not a good place to play, but quite fun. Um, there was also tennis courts. Played a bit of tennis, I think. Ping pong. I remember playing ping pong with my dad. Um, what else? I, I pricked my hand on a cactus once. I, I'd never seen a cactus before, so I went up to a cactus and like touched it and got a cut and it freaked me the fuck out because I was like, plants aren't supposed to attack you. <laughs> and it fucked me up. I was like traumatized by that cactus. Um, so that happened. Uh, what else? You could see the tennis courts from the top of the big slide. I remember that. If you if you looked over the, the side, there was like a you could see the tennis courts, and there was like balls. I remember those balls, tennis balls, stuck in the fence between the big slide and the tennis courts. I remember that now. It's all coming back to me. I remember they had sprinklers. That was cool. Everywhere had had big sprinklers because it it all had like. It wasn't grass, but it was like this weird imitation. It wasn't fake, like it was real plants, but it wasn't like regular grass. It was like something else that looks kind of like grass, but isn't grass. Um, kind of looked like clovers. Could have been clovers. Um, and there's sprinklers everywhere. I remember that. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty much all I can remember from the whole place. Uh, just trying to think. No. Nah. Um, oh, they had a restaurant, like a fancy restaurant. I think we had to pay for that ourselves, given the fact that we'd only go there once per trip. I think there was like a restaurant that was paid for as part of the thing, and then a fancy restaurant that you would, that you had to pay for, and we'd only go there once per trip. And uh, one time we went there, and got out. I was just a terrible autistic child who just couldn't sit still and was just running around all over the place. And one time, what happened is they were having a party on a on a little, like over somewhere in the distance there was a party. Um, and we were at the restaurant, but right near the restaurant, there was a big laser, firing a laser at the party, which would like hit a disco ball and like diffuse or whatever. I don't know why the laser was so far far away from the actual party. Probably so that people don't damage their eyes. I would assume. But yeah, it was really far away, but it was kind of close to the restaurant. And I saw it. I'd never seen a fucking laser before. I didn't know what the fuck it was. But, uh, and, I, and I was like, whoa, a laser beam? Because I must have asked my dad or something to figure out that it was a laser beam. I can set stuff on fire like the movies. And so I grabbed a pillow, which was on like a chair from the restaurant. And I was like holding it in front of the laser beam. <laughs> and obviously when I did that, it would shut off all the lasers at the part... I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. <laughs> I was like holding it in front of the laser beam, trying to set it on fire, trying to like see if it would burn a hole through it. It didn't do anything. Uh, uh, yeah, and then my dad came over and told me off. I remember that. Um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, uh, I got an ear infection. That was fun. <laughs> I got an ear infection at the swimming pool, probably, in this ear. Still have I, I suspect that's the root of my earwax problems. It might not be, but um, because I got an ear infection and they had to wash it out, 
but like they do like a, when you get an infection they like wash your ear out and when you get your ear washed out it permanently makes it so that you have to keep getting your ears washed out um but surprisingly like normally when you get your ear washed out it happens instantly but this didn't happen until like years and years later where i had to start getting my ears flushed out so i don't know why um yeah weird situation but that happened i got an ear infection um and it got my ears flushed out with the doctor there um and then i remember uh what else so there was a like a little library but most of the books weren't in english like it was mostly like an adult library they didn't have many kids books but um they had the rainbow fish is that what that book's called do you know the one about the fish with one rainbow scale but it was in french and so my dad was trying to read it in french to me and like translate it into english with his like gcse level french uh that was i remember that happening oh and the biggest thing probably the most important life event that happened at this um holiday resort to me was losing my favorite stuffed toy so i used to have loads of stuffed toys i still have a few of them but none of my favorites are here like this guy kiwi um but yeah i had like loads of them i was big fat big into stuffed toys as a kid like uh beanie babies and stuff uh and um i i called them friends i called them my friends much like kimono friends like you know how the species in kimono friends are called friends it was the same sort of thing where the species of pl in my head as a child the species of plush toy were called friends um and so when i was going on holiday i had to bring someone with me obviously because you got to sleep cuddling a, a toy you can't you can't not sleep cuddling a, a toy when you're fucking 10 years old or whatever so i brought one with me and obviously i was like well i'm gonna bring my favorite one um i don't remember his name but it was a puppy like a dalmatian puppy and I, as a kid i was obsessed with dalmatians and puppies so this was obviously my favorite one each one each of them had names by the way um but i don't remember most of them all i remember is pedro the cat it was a cat with a knot in its tail that i couldn't undo <laughs> um i think it's still i don't know it's probably in storage somewhere but uh this one i don't remember its name but it was a dog a little puppy dalmatian puppy and i fucking left it there i left it by accident i forgot to pack it when we were going and it was fucking depressing that was my favorite friend of all of them and i left it in turkey never to be found again i only lost two friends in my whole time that one and um this little cat which i left in a playground but at the time I lost the cat was a bit later. It was during the time when I was obsessed with spies. And so in my mind, the cat was a spy. And um, when I left it in the playground, I just, in my mind, was like, okay, it's just going on a mission in deep cover, so it's fine. Whereas the dog was before I'd, I'd gone into spies, so I was just really sad about losing my favorite toy. Um, so that happened. Uh, so yeah, that was the story of my weird adventures in this Turkish, um, Turkish resort. I suppose I can show you around a little bit if I get get it up on Google Maps. Uh, I wonder if I can like show you around a little. Hold on a second. Well, unfortunately, the kids pool, which is what I have the the most memories of, is not available on Street View. There just isn't any pictures of it. There's only a few. So this is sort of like the entrance area, I guess. Um, where you would like pull up in a car uh, and then I'm trying to find the, maybe it's this uh, no not quite it's somewhere around here might be this but this is where I got pricked by the cactus one of these cacti pricked me um, maybe this uh, Oh yeah, this is the forest area, where there's like a little trail through the forest. It's very small, it's not like actually a big forest trail area, it's like a tiny one. Um, maybe this is it. Hold on, I'm just trying to click around to find the entrance area, like the proper... No, this isn't it. The bamboo forest, yeah, I remember this place. Could be here. Nope, still the forest area. 
here. No, we're back at the cactus. Okay, well, I don't think I'll be able to find the, the proper entrance place again, but let's see if I can look around the beach a bit. Ah, uh, this is the pool. So this is like the the big pool I was talking about with the raised level with the waterfall. Um, oh, I almost drowned here <laughs> as a really young kid. The first time I ever went here, um, I remember this happening. Like This is one of my earliest memories, actually, is, is almost drowning here. Uh, so what happened is I was like here. Or actually, no, I, was, I think I was like here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was exactly there. I was I was right here. Uh, over over here somewhere and um, I was gonna go into the pool so my dad was like let me go get your armband floaty armband so you can go float in the pool right so he went he went off like to go get my armbands like literally five seconds away like to one of these chairs over here where he was sitting he went to go get the armbands and I just walked into the pool without any armbands and just like yeah just fucking walked in and sunk to the bottom and then my dad like ran over and pulled me out and I started I was like freaking the fuck out I was like you idiot why did you walk? yeah I must have been really really young I must have been like I don't know five maybe even younger really really young one of my earliest memories actually is falling into this pool I also remember I don't know why they thought this was a good idea these tiles I have no idea why they thought it was a good idea because in the midday sun it would be so hot like, so, so, so hot. You would literally burn your feet. Like, you couldn't walk on it in bare feet, but it's a pool, so of course you're not going to have shoes around. So you're just, like, burning your feet trying to fucking walk on these hot fucking coals. Um, uh, yeah, I had to do that a lot as a kid, like, wandering around these, like, very hot tiles. What else have we got? Oh, this is the top of the pool. Um, some teenagers would jump off from here to the bottom one and get told off, but I never did that, obviously, as a kid. Uh, let's see. I have to navigate it in this kind of awkward fashion. Oh, this is some of the places where you would stay. This is, oh, we're back at the cactus again. God damn it. What the fucking cactus? Maybe this is the kids' pool. No, not quite. The kids' pool's like... You can't really see it. It's like behind this building. Uh, I just, I don't think there's any street view of it. No, this is just a still picture. Uh, oh, this is the little playground. Um, this is where I learned about shaken baby syndrome. <laughs> I don't ask me the context for that one. Oh yeah, this is the uh, the big um, graphical error. I remember this place. <laughs> this is where there was a big black uh, eldritch fucking old one that you couldn't see because you, whenever you looked at it, your mind censored it and it just created this big black square. I remember that. I remember that from, from, from my trips to this place. <laughs> uh, no, over here in the distance, if you can see it, this building, that's the fancy restaurant I was talking about. Um, and this is like... That's the, over here, that's the normal restaurant where you would, like, eat breakfast and stuff. Um, and that's the beach, obviously, you can see. Uh, what's over here? Have we been here yet? Oh, yeah, we just were there. I always remember wondering, I think this is the place, right? Yeah, what the fuck this building was. I had no idea, and I still, to this day, have no idea what the fuck this building is. Um, just this random, tiny building. You weren't allowed in there. Like, it was locked. I tried to get in there once, but it was locked. Oh, but back here. Uh, what's this? Uh, just another view of the same place. Oh, there's the showers. You would shower off. And, uh, maybe we can get to the seaside. Yeah, as you can see, Turkish flag. Very much in Turkey. Uh, and there's the wall I was talking about, the rocky wall where there was lizards. This is the rocky wall that you couldn't quite climb up where there were lizards. Um, and over there, you see this... Okay, there, here we go. This is giving me good context for the stories. So this hut was like an extension of the fancy restaurant. That's where we were eating. And the laser beam was like around here sort of area. And then down at the end of this pier is where the party was, like over here. Um, 
Oh, also, I saw I saw my first ever and probably only ever I saw a blood moon from this exact spot, uh, like a, a lunar eclipse, where I was I was looking over and there was this giant red fucking moon, and it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Over the other side of this fence was another resort, so we couldn't go over there. But uh, I would always look over there and be like, "What's life over like in the other resort?" Uh, let's see. Any other good, pl interesting places to go? Um, more of the seaside. Uh, yeah, it was a very... Look at the fucking mountains. It was really cool. Just mountains and sea. A very cool place. Wish I'd appreciate it more as a five-year-old. <laughs> oh, we're back at the fucking cactus. I swear, this cactus will just haunt me for the rest of my life. What's this one? Oh, this is the entrance area. We're back at the entrance area. I want to try and go through here. I, I just was there like a second ago, and now it won't fucking let me get back there. I don't know. I literally just went in there a second ago, when, just before I started recording. I was just in another fucking one that was just there, but it won't let me go back there for some reason. I don't know why. Like, what? Why won't it let me? It's very weird. No, nope. you're gonna you're gonna let me. Oh, whatever. Um. Oh, there we go. Okay, I don't know why this dot is in the completely wrong place on the map because this is not. Anyway, this is the entrance area. Uh, this is like where you would check in and stuff. As a kid, I would climb on these little things and then just over there you can't see here but behind these plants there's like a little fountain and i would play on the fountain and then in this sort of in this area over here that's where the doctor was where i got my ears flushed out after i got an ear infection um so yeah i hope this has been illuminating for you more like a nostalgic experience for me than anything else but, uh, yeah, I just thought that was kind of interesting, that that's a part of my life that happened. Going on, like, this weird, really fancy, expensive holiday resort that by all means I should never have been able to experience, but due to this very strange set of circumstances regarding a, the son of a Turkish billionaire, who was also really depressed. He was really depressed, and he used to be addicted to, like, cocaine and hookers. But, like, he was still really depressed, no matter how much cocaine and hookers he consumed. He was always just really depressed. And he just, according... He just wanted to impress his dad by getting a university degree. Um... By getting a PhD. But, uh... When you're rich, I guess you don't have to actually try. You just pay my dad to do it for you. <laughs> so there you go. That's If you ever wondered how rich people have... Um, university degrees and shit like that, qualifications, uh, they just pay my dad to do it. Every rich person who has a qualification, they just paid my dad. <laughs> I don't know if they actually paid him or, if, or what happened, but... Yeah, and I still don't know what his connection was to my schooling exactly. I don't know how corrupt that school was or what. Um, but it is very suspicious. Like, you would expect... Like, what's suspicious about it is that they kicked me out on, like, just after he stopped, you know, his relationship with my dad. I, no, that, that I'm not entirely sure of what the relationship was. Um, like, that's what's weird is that they kicked me out. Like, if, if, if it was just that, oh, we can't afford this anymore, so you have to stop going, then they, then it wouldn't have been kicked me out. But, like, it's the fact that, that like, like, maybe they wanted to expel me before. Because I was a bad kid, like, I was always getting in trouble. Um, now, this wasn't, this was partially my fault, but also partially due to a genuine conspiracy uh, that the teachers had against me, which I have uh, evidence of, in term, like, through overheard conversations and stuff like that, and stuff that my parents have told me, uh, that they had, that they, the teachers had said to them in private meetings. Basically, I have a whole fucking network of conspiracies that point to all of the teachers in that school genuinely having something against me uh, for seemingly no reason and possibly even conspiring with students um, to physically assault me on multiple occasions 
this sounds like a schizo thing, but this actually, I'm pretty sure this is real, <laughs> like, unless I'm completely crazy. I'm pretty sure this is real. Well, certain parts of it are real, at least, like, provably real. Like, I did get physically assaulted by another student who seemed to have connections to the teachers, and I got in trouble for that, um, because I assumed the teachers had an agenda. So, uh, literally, uh, uh, when I was in year seven, which is, like, um... I don't know, the first year of middle school in America, uh, a, a, a year 12 kid, which is like a 16, 17 year old. So I'm like, I don't remember how old, like f f 12 or 13 or something. And this 16, 17 year old comes up and just hits me and accuses me of bullying his brother. Um, I'll, I'll tell the whole story in more detail uh, in another video because that's hashtag content. But um, <laughs> there was a that was a whole fucking shebang of like CIA torture rituals that happened to me. <laughs> but anyway, so I don't know what the teacher's connection with this Turkish billionaire was, but I suspect it existed. Um, but yeah, that's my fucking weird story of my childhood where I went to a, a weird resort in Turkey. Never ex barely explored outside of the resort, barely experienced Turkish culture at all, but went there like regularly. And all I remember is the water slides, almost drowning, and playing tennis. <laughs>